Hello, everyone. We're just going to give it like 30 seconds for people to log on and then we'll get started. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca De Palma and I am a PA student at Pacific University currently in my clinical year. Um, so first, just kind of wanted to tell you guys some housekeeping things about how this is gonna go. Um, so I'm doing this with Picmonic and we just wanna let you know that we love questions. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat at any time throughout the presentation. Um, I will go ahead and read them out loud to anyone that's watching this later in the recording to know what the question was, but feel free to put anything you want in there. Um, and then also make sure you stay to the end because someone that is in this meeting um, will receive a one year free Picmonic subscription, but you have to be present to win. Also, this webinar will be recorded and it will be available on YouTube starting tomorrow. Also, anyone that um, registered or RSVP'd, um, you'll also be emailed a link uh, so you can keep an eye out for that to watch it later as well. And then finally, also stay tuned to the end. Um, we can also put it in the chat now, but there is a special promotion. Um, for anyone that sees this in the next 24 hours, um, there's going to be a link to get 30% off your Picmonic subscription. Usually it's just 20, but for the next 24 hours, it'll be 30 if you use the link below. And then also, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you're also can DM me any questions you have. I post a lot about key advice, things like that, about my experience. Um, so on Instagram, I'm Rebecca West Coast PA, and that'll be in the chat as well. Okay. So that's it about that. And now I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself before I get started on different tools that I've used in case school. So I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. I was born and raised there. I knew I wanted to be a PA since I was in 10th or 11th grade of high school. So I knew for a long time. And then from there, I went to undergrad at LMU, which is Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, California. And I was a health and human science major there which is kind of like bio, but a little bit more human and a little less plant. That's how I like to describe it. Um, so I graduated there. And then upon graduating my senior year, I decided to apply to K-School over that summer. And I went to interviews over that next year, which you would call my, my gap year. Um, but I also stayed in LA and worked as a medical assistant for allergy immunology, pediatrics, and sleep surgery ENT. So I did that. Um, just kind of worked and got various patient care hours while I was also applying and interviewing. I went to three PA school interviews um, and I ended up choosing the school I'm currently at, which is Pacific University, that I started in May of 2020. So right during the pandemic. So we were, um, a lot of it was online, but we did go in person for skills and anything that would have needed to be learned in person, we were in person for, um, but we also had a lot of lectures online. Um, so I did that and I just finished my didactic year about like a month and a half ago. So that was exciting. And I am now in my clinical year. So just very clinicals. I am on my second rotation right now. So um, if you guys have questions about didactic year, clinical year, there will be a QA and a at the end. Feel free to put your questions in now and I'll get to them later. Um, or just anything about yay or anything about like my story of how I got there, things that I did, um, feel free to just drop them in. Um, and then I wanted to tell you guys just go over how I personally discovered Picmonic. So that was something that I had not heard of before PA school, but when you're in PA school, you kind of hear what everyone is like using. And so I learned about this through my classmates, classmates from the year above us, um, things like that. And I mainly used it for, we'll, we'll go on and like show you what it's like, but I mainly used it for memorizing things such as like pharmacology, certain drugs, antibiotics. Um, we're on the module system at my school in Pacific. And for that, that means you kind of like binge one subject, test it next one. And so we had one subject that was infection immunology. So it's all the antibiotics, all the bugs, all the drugs. Um, and it's just a lot of things. So. Um, here, I'll pull it up for you. It's just kind of a way to memorize things in a way that you kind of, you watch a little video, helps you kind of associate it with photos. We'll show you one here. And 
then you kind of don't have to worry about memorizing it because it's just it's so like attached to like an image and there's not going to be sound here but in general you can it tells like a little story and kind of associate something so for example there is a drug in the aminoglycosides class called neomycin and they have like a neon mouth and so then if you're trying to remember all the drugs in the class it's like here's the page of this class and then it has all these things to help you memorize it it also has ways for you to memorize the side effects and things like that so it's specifically helpful for antibiotics drugs any like root memorization things um so that's kind of what i use it for um but yeah so now i'm just going to go into the various different resources um just kind of like the meat of this presentation what different things are available for you to use in peace school what the differences are what the pros what the cons are um and kind of what they're like so i just kind of briefly touched on picmonic uh, they also have other things beyond drugs they have um different conditions or diseases and then the like that picture of that picmonic will have like all of the different side effects or the different symptoms or ways to treat it, things like that, all kind of associated in one image. So it's very visual and helps you memorize those things better. And so I would say the strength of Picmonic is being able to associate with those images. And like once you watch them, at least for me and like my classmates, it's kind of like, okay, like I don't have to worry about that subject now. Like that one I want, like I have it memorized. Whereas sometimes in case school, a lot of things can be pretty complicated and you might struggle to memorize something more. So it's really good for those more like rogue memorization things. Um, and then the next one I'm going to go over is called Sketchy Med. Um, I actually haven't used this one, but I just want to go over it because people do use it. Um, it is similar in that it teaches through like photos and pictures, um, I would say. Um, that one isn't specifically tailored to PA, so you just would use like the, um, like the MD one, but I mean, we learned like similar enough things, so it works. Um, but again, it's a very visual, like if you're a visual learner, same thing with Picmonic, it kind of walks you through like more um, of that kind of content to help with more of those memorization things, especially when it comes to um, things that are more like buzzwordy or um, you just really need to like memorize things in association. Um, so now I'm gonna go over some kind of like different types of things that you can use tools. So first I'm gonna talk about Anki and Quizlet. So those ones are more so like flashcard um, types of applications. Um, I used Quizlet a little bit in undergrad. Anki is more so, I haven't really heard of Anki until I was in like the medical world. Uh, but just to talk about those and compare and contrast them, um, this right here is Anki. So the pro with Anki is what it does is called space repetition. So when you are going through flashcards to memorize something, let's just say we're doing like rashes and derm or something like that, and you go through, the, you, you don't just go through the flashcards, you say like how well you memorized it. Um, and so based off of your answer, it sorts how frequently to bring the flashcard back to you. So that's really nice. It's very, um, like it's been proven that that is a very effective way of memorizing things through space repetition. So like if you keep on getting one right, it'll stop showing it to you. And if you keep on getting one wrong, it'll show it to you more, but there's like a whole algorithm that goes into it. So that one is cool that it has that application. The cons are that with Anki as compared to Quizlet, it's not as um, like you could see what it's up. It's not very like beautiful to look at. Like it's just kind of like plain, like looks like it's from like a desktop from the 2000s. You can't like do as many customization things as you can with Quizlet and it's not as compatible with sharing them with other people. Um, so now to go to Quizlet, um, pull that up as well. Um, that is a different flashcard site. Um, I actually use this one more than Anki simply because my classmates did and they all like shared a flashcard deck so it kind of made it easier. Um, so with Quizlet, good thing is much more like visually pleasing, but in a way where it's, it's kind of more user friendly, like it's easier to figure out um, if you've ever used it. I'm sure you know, it's just very, it's very simplistic. It works very well. Um, it does, like if you miss it, it brings the card back, but not in the same way as Anki. It doesn't have the same um, algorithm where you like rank how well you need the card. So it's either for Quizlet, you either say, yes, I got it or no, I don't. There's no like in between of like how well you know it. 
Um, so it doesn't have as much of that algorithm. So that'll be the con of Quizlet. However, the pros are, I think it's much more user-friendly. And then the biggest pro is that you can easily share your deck. So in my class, we literally have like a class Quizlet like account um, and everyone like shares their deck. So we literally have like a folder of like cardiology and like neuro and like derm and everyone that makes decks, like someone's like, oh, here's like all of like this lecturers, um, like flashcards, we'll like share it into that folder and we all have access to it. So it's just super nice to just be like collaborative and have everyone's stuff there. Um, our class is very collaborative as a whole. And so we always share resources. So it depends on if that's something your class does, but if it does, Quizlet is very user-friendly for that. Um, very easy to do. Um, and everyone can almost like subscribe to like the decks and things like that. Um, so that one is nice for those reasons. And then next, I am going to go over Rosh Review. The Rosh Review is a very popular one. Um, I like Rosh Review. I didn't really use it as much during didactic um, because it's a little bit more expensive, but I do use it now in clinical year. Um, and a lot of my classmates have used it throughout like the whole like day school. Um, so Rosh Review, I'm gonna compare that one to Smarty Pants. Those are the two I'm gonna call like question banks. So we have Picmonic and Sketchy, which is more for like studying, visual learning, Anki and Quizlet, which is more for, like flashcards, reviewing. And now we're at Rosh Review and Smarty Pants, which are more question banks. You're practicing um, doing questions for a test or for the pants or whatever. So I'll start with Rosh Review. Very popular one. Um, in fact, my school and other schools actually require you to get it during clinical year, like my end of rotation exam. Um, so in my clinical year, you go on a rotation or you end a rotation, some people have like an exam and our end of rotation exam is literally on Rosh Review. Um, so if you've already been using Rosh Review and didactic, you might be like familiar with like how it works. Um, but I think it just goes to show it's a good question bank if the program is using it as their end of rotation exam. Um, it aligns very well with the pants, which for those of you who don't know, the pants is a test you take at the end of PA school to become a certified PA. Um, and so their questions are just known for being similar. So it's really good practice. Um, all of their questions are sorted. So you can do like a didactic version where it's sorted like, <clears throat> here's a cardiology question. Here's a neuro question. Or there's a clinical year version where it's like, here's family medicine questions. So it kind of sorts it by like a rotation type. So that's nice. Um, and it's just very user-friendly, very clean. Um, Ross review, good. Now if we go to Smarty Pants, similar in that it's a question bank. Um, I also really like Smarty Pants. I do have Smarty Pants. Um, I think the questions are comparable to Rosh Review and it is cheaper um, than Rosh Review. Rosh Review is kind of expensive. Um, so that is a pro as well. Um, Smarty Pants also has a lot of like partners. Um, so like on Smarty Pants, you can kind of have other resources. I believe they're a partner like with Picmonic and like various other PA um, platforms. So you can kind of have access to them through Smarty Pants. I would say it's Smarty Pants isn't quite as clean as Rosh Review, but also Rosh Review just has like its question link, um, which is good because it's like clean, you know what you're doing, but like it has, I would say Smarty Pants has more resources. They even have little things that like teach you. It'll be like, here's the pearls you need to know for whatever, for um, this condition or for um, this um, subject. And so it also has like some teaching applications where I believe Rosh Review is, does not have anything like that, it's just questions where Smarty Pants kind of has more going on there. So um, now if I, I was gonna let you know, if I had to choose three of these, so we did Picmonic, Sketchy, Anki, Quizlet, Rosh Review, Smarty Pants. I had to choose three. I would probably choose, um, I'd probably choose Rosh Review for questions. Although I also do enjoy Smarty Pants, though it's a toss up, they're both good. Um, I, I would, yeah, I think I would probably choose both of those. And then I would do Picmonic and Quizlet. I'd probably choose Quizlet over Anki, just given that um, it is easy to gain resources because no one wants to spend like hours making flashcards. So it's good to be able to like use other people's decks easily. Um, so yeah, I would say Quizlet, Picmonic, and then toss up between Rosh View and Smarty Pants. So 
that would probably be my leanings, but they're all good. They were all PQ. It just really depends on your learning style. For example, I'm saying I would choose Quizlet, but like I hardly used Quizlet since PA school just because I feel like I didn't have time to study everything and then do a million flashcards. So I kind of just studied and then took the test because <laughs> I didn't have time to do so many flashcards. So I don't use that many flashcards in general, but if I just based on the application, I think it's a little bit better um for that one so it just kind of depends on how you learn um if you are the one that's creating all your own flashcards then i would maybe recommend anki whereas i don't really create my own study materials like ever i just use ones that are already out there um that are shared in our drive or shared in our quizlet so like that is what i would use um so it just kind of like depends on like what works better for you okay so that is what i wanted to go over for the resources um, if you have any questions about them, I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. Um, but now I wanted to start a little bit of a Q&A. So if you have any questions about PA school or about a certain module, how the module system works, um, feel free to put them into the chat um, or about testing in PA school or if you want to know about interviews or just anything along the process. Um, I know a lot of you, if you're applying this year, probably finished your applications already, but if you have any questions on applications or personal statements, um, I've edited a lot of personal statements for people. So if there's any questions about any of those types of things or um, how to be successful in P-School or any worries you have about P-School, I'm happy to let you know. So now is your opportunity and you can go ahead and put them in the and I will um, wait here until any questions come in, but thank you guys so much. And um, let you have any questions, and then I will announce the winner for who won the um, free pick mark. Okay, so I'm Okay, so the first question I have in the chat is, do I have any tips for writing personal statements? Yes. So a couple of things we can go over. Um, one, I think it's important to use almost all of your characters. This is your one chance to really speak directly to admissions. So you really wanna to try to get to that 5,000. Like you really wanna to try to fill it, but also only fill it if you have things to fill it with, you know, like don't just, fill it to fill it, it needs to be all meaningful things. Also, you don't wanna be super generic. You really want someone to read this and feel like they haven't read this statement before. You want it to be very specific and unique to you. Um, I know it's hard, a lot of people have the same, the prompt is why do you wanna be a PA? And a lot of people have similar reasons, but really think about what differentiates you, how you're different um, to try to make it be unique. If you have anything that you can kind of weave a theme through your personal statement, that always looks good. Um, and then most importantly, just make sure you're addressing the prompt. You'd be surprised, but I've read a lot of statements and they just hardly even answer the question. So you have to make sure you're answering why do you want to be a PA? Be very clear that you're answering it. And then you also want to address other things. Like you want to address that you know the difference between a PA and an MD. I would make sure to have that in your statement. Um, like kind of why you chose it compared to other interprofessional professions, making sure to be positive about like all the different professions because they're all great. Um, so that's something you can address. Um, also bring up your experience that you've had and just do it in a very organized manner. Make sure they know what's going on, have a dedicated paragraph for each of these separate topics to kind of just make it clear um, and just have no superfluous characters. Like every character should be pointed and useful. Um, so you don't need like, for example, you don't need like three adjectives to describe how excited you are. Like just use the one word that describes that you just want to be to the point and not having anything extra. Like every character that's there should be there for a reason. Um, so that would be my tips for that. And I got a next question that I will read. It says, hi, I'm in my second semester of school and wanted to know how you recommend studying clinical medicine. I did great on my first exam, but I just never feel I have enough time to get through all of the information, signs, symptoms, treatment, et cetera. I feel as though I'm not re retaining the information as much as I'd like. 
Okay, and I'm assuming this is second semester of PA school. If you want to answer in the chat just to clarify that, I'm assuming it is. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, yes, it is second semester of PA school. So yeah, so clinical medicine, um, just to clarify everyone, um, I'm in a module system. All PA schools are different. Not everyone does it this way. Um, so sometimes like at the beginning of the year, modules are like fundamentals of medicine and it's kind of like the physiology and how things work. And then as school goes on, you have more clinical medicine modules. So for example, um, cardiology is a clinical medicine module. You're learning about diseases, you're learning about their signs, their symptoms, you're learning about um, how to treat them, you're learning about the pharmacology and everything that applies to them. And it's kind of, if you were to work in cardiology, the things you would be encountering. So it's clinical medicine. Um, well, first of all, um, to the person in the chat, the fact that you did great on your first exam is great. Um, that's, you know, obviously what you're studying is going fine. Um, you're not going to be able to study everything. Like you said, that signs, symptoms, treatment, you're having trouble retaining it all. No one is going to retain everything you learn in PA school. There is so much stuff, like, and I feel like at first it's a common misconception in PA school. It's like, how am I going to know all this? Like, it's just, it's, you know, drinking out of the fire hose, like they say, but you can't know all of it. Like, there's just, this is too much, <laughs> like you just can't. So you kind of need to kind of pick and choose and as you go along in peace school, you'll kind of get the hang of it. Um, but it's more so like, how do I say this? If you can try to learn like what differentiates things. So when you're actually practicing, you don't need to know like list every symptom to one thing and every fine detail. You need to be able to find out what's going on and how to fix it. So try to focus on what differentiates to different diseases. Um, and depending on which clinical medicine topic you're in, that'll be easier to see what I'm talking about. But try to focus on that um, and those things that are very applicable and relevant that you'll need to know. You'll get a hang of like what's less important to know. Um, and then also like people also have a feeling that they, even if they do memorize it, they forget it by the time they're on the next module or the next topic or class or whatever. And that's also normal. Everyone feels that way. But as you go along in PA school, um, at least in my program, towards the end, you start, we have like an emergency medicine module or a pediatrics module. So that's more like in that you see um, stuff we learn in other modules because in emergency medicine, you can have some cardiology issues pop up. You can have pulmonology issues pop up. So it kind of pulls forward and comes back around in different formats. Um, you will see the important things come up time and time again. Um, acid base balance in the body, electrolyte imbalances, you will see many times in PA school, I promise you. Um, so the things that are really important will come back up. And then when you're in your actual clinical year, it'll come back up again in a totally new format. So you'll get there. It, it's designed like this, um, but it works. It, it really does. And just don't worry about not retaining everything that happens. Just try to focus on the more important aspects and you'll get there. Okay, next question. Um, when did you receive the interview invite for Pacific and how was your interview experience? Also, how did you manage time at the beginning of the program? What helped you? No problem. Um, okay, so uh, when did I receive my interview invite? When did I receive my interview invite? Um, Gosh, I don't remember when I received like the actual email, but I interviewed in November um, and the interview was good. It was really good. Um, yeah. In general, I went to three interviews in general. This is going to sound weird, but I love peaceful interviews. Like I just think they're fun. Um, if you can kind of like dissociate from like the nervous aspect of it, which like obviously everyone's going to be nervous in an interview, it's fine. Um, but the thing is, it's really a great experience for you to see the school. I know some interviews might be online, but that's okay. You're still meeting the faculty. You're meeting the program. If you are going in person, you're seeing the school. Um, you often meet some of the current students. Um, like I help out with the interviews at my school. So, um, if you interview there, you might see me on like student panel. So it's just a really good time for you to see if you want to go there. Like, it's not just that they're interviewing you, you're also interviewing them. Um, and I'll tell you right now, every single interview I went to, I had one, like what I, I thought I knew to school. I thought I researched them a lot. I thought I knew what I was getting myself into. And then after the interview, I had like a completely different opinion about the schools in a good way where I just learned way more about them. 
Um, so that's really cool. You just really get to find out like what it would be like to be a student there. And I thought that was just super fun. And then also if you are going to interview, you're like visiting a new place, you're meeting all these new people. So I thought it was really exciting um, and just a fun time. Obviously everyone's gonna be nervous, but just try to relax. Know that every single person there is nervous. These people that have been interviewing people have been doing it for years. They know that that's the case. So try not to worry about that too much. And then I also say to not over-prepare. Um, the only questions I prepared for interviews is tell me about yourself. Why do you wanna be a PA and why this program, which you tailor to each different program you're interviewing at. Um, aside from that, like you don't know what they're gonna ask you. And they, the main thing is they just want you to be yourself. Like they don't want you to rehearse and memorize things. And even for the three, I like, prepared I just kind of like thought about what I want to say I didn't like write a script that I memorized you don't want to sound too structured you want to just be yourself be personable um and then also my like favorite piece of advice is just make sure you're smiling because I feel like people forget because they're nervous and they just want you to be like happy to be there they want you to want to go to their program so like make an active effort to be like look happy <laughs> if that makes sense um okay so that was my interview experience and then um how to manage time at the beginning of the program that helped me. Um, so I, in general, am like pretty good at time management, um, but I would say at the beginning of PA school, you're gonna just be confused on the how to study and manage your time. Like everyone is, you're gonna like change what you do the first like couple months I say, like I feel like every module I did it differently <laughs> for like a while. Um, and even throughout the year, I mean like, each class or module, however your school does it, is gonna have like a different module leader or a different professor and different professors teach different ways. So like I had to study differently for different modules because there's a different teacher um, or teach different content. I had to study DERM way different than I had to study cardio. There's a visual component to DERM. I had to study endocrine, which is a lot more like inner workings um, of like things connecting to each other than I had to study, you know, musculoskeletal. So like you kind of have to adapt how you're learning with each kind of subject. And you'll, you'll see what I mean when you're there, um, but don't be afraid to do that, that's fine. And in terms of prioritizing your time, I would just you know make sure you're getting done what you need to get done. I wouldn't put it off, but also for me, I like to work ahead a little bit because for me maintaining a social life in case school was important. And so I wanted to be able to be ahead enough. So if something came up and people wanted to go to dinner, whatever, I was always able to say yes. Um, I just want, always wanted to put myself in a good position so I was able to do that. And I do think I was able to do that well um, because that was something that was important to me. And I wanted to make sure I was able to prioritize all the things that I wanted to do. So just kind of find out what system works for you. Don't worry about using a million resources. Don't worry about, you know, doing all these superfluous things and all these, like, if there's all these YouTube videos that are optional. You don't need to watch all of them. Like do what works for you. If you learn through YouTube videos, watch those. If you learn through, through flashcards, do flashcards. Don't feel like you have to do everything because that is a feeling that people have and not everyone learns the same way. So I would just figure out which ones are actually helping you learn and do that. Don't waste time on things that aren't really like progressing you and, um, and helping that out. And then second, also don't pay attention to what other people are doing because studying is like, a fingerprint like no one studies the same there's not two people in my class of 60 students that do things the same way people are sometimes more like similar in how they study they have like a study group but no one's exactly the same so don't worry about how much different time people are spending on different things find out what works for you and do that um and you'll get the hang of it a promise at first it seems intimidating but you'll get the hang of it um and learn how to manage your time and then once you do that you'll have more time for the other things you want to do so It'll be good. Okay, and that is the end. I'm now gonna announce the winner. Um, so our winner is Adam Bloomfield. Congratulations, he just won a free subscription for a year of Pygmonic, congrats. Um, if anyone has any other questions, follow me on Instagram. It's at Rebecca West Coast PA. Um, feel free to follow me, you can DM me. I have a lot of posts on PA School. Um, also, there's gonna be a link in the chat for um, if you want a cheaper, I'm gonna put my link there in the chat, Rebecca West Coast PA. And also the link in the chat is for a discounted version of Pygmonic, like I said, um, and this is only gonna be active for 24 hours. Um, so if you wanna do that, um, I find it very helpful. Um, and then also feel free to follow me and 
talk to you there. So thank you all for coming and good luck with everything.